On today's episode of Watch Jerigo, we are here with my 2000 Corvette C5 that just got a new wiring harness. And it still has a problem. What is going on guys? I am Watch Jerigo and like I said, I'm here with my 2000 C5 Corvette convertible I bought for only $5,000. And in the last video, we replaced the entire wiring harness on this thing because the original had been eaten by mice. The wiring harness took way longer than we ever expected because obviously the top side here is very easy, but it was mounted to the back of the head and it's very hard to access the back of the head in the C5. So of course, you guys saw, we ended up removing the intake just so we could get to the back bolts and that let us get the harness off and uh, then throw it up on the lift to get the bottom connections for the O2 sensors and uh, crank position and a few other things out of there. After we got that done, we had fixed basically every issue on this car, including putting the ECU in the correct direction because that shop didn't do that. And they said they had repaired that harness, but I found no repairs in it, just problems other than the math which makes no sense because that it doesn't even need it to run. Lots and lots of failed grounds, wires that had still been chewed off, all kinds of issues on the old harness. Anyway, we're doing better, but we still have a misfire on probably this cylinder. We think this cylinder because it's the one that's cold after she starts up. So today we've got plugs and wires and uh, we're gonna start ripping all that stuff off and swapping it out and I think that's gonna fix the car. I hope it's gonna fix the car. I don't think there's anything else that could be wrong, but if there is, after we do this, it's either a dead coil, so we'll have to do a little bit of coil swapping, or a dead cylinder. And if it's a dead cylinder, we're in trouble. My prized 80,000 mile LS that has another 300,000 miles left in it will have been hurt. We made a quick O'Reilly's run to pick up some NGK plugs and some OmniSpark wires, and we're ready to uh, jump right in and rip it all apart. So, the problem coil. Pull the wire off. We have already had the wire off, so of course it came right off. Oh man, those do not come off easily. So, you know, a visual inspection of this wire doesn't seem like there's any like real problem. It is an OmniSpark or something. Based on the color, you know, it's pretty easy to tell when it's an O'Reilly's wire. And that plug in there looks like it might be a little bit new, so that's already scary. Okay, I got that spark plug a little bit loose and we're getting it out now. Hopefully, it looks like it has a problem with the plug. That's, that is my hope here. Like, a failed electrode or something crazy, but I doubt it. Okay, looks like we got it. Some kind of, like, laser iridium? AC Delco, oh, that's a factory plug. Hmm. Look at the gap on that thing. I think the electrode is blown off of it. Let's take the feeler gauges and see what's what. So I'm not sure this is as bad as I thought. It looks like a gigantic gap, but it's just slightly bigger than 0 0.035 or 0.88 millimeter. This one is a very tight 035. It doesn't move at all. This one looks like it has about an extra hundredth, at least an extra hundredth, because you can actually move the feeler gauge up and down. It might not be the culprit. Also, you can see how wet it is. It smells like pure gasoline. Like, a lot of fuel's been dumping in there. One really great thing about LS wires is the coils are right above the spark plug, which is almost as good as coil on plug. Gotta love LS coils, but they're all the same length. So every wire can fit in any position. All right, so we're gonna wake up the old fluke here and we're gonna ohm out the new wire. Let's see what we've got. So this is a brand new wire from the kit. 401 ohms. And here is the wire that came off the car. Let's pull out the boot. We get rid of that guy. And three kilo ohms. That's a very different reading. I've got a good bite. Let's pull another one off the car and see what we get. This is the one that's under the uh, dipstick, so it's the one of the harder ones to get. So why did you choose it? <laughs> All right, <laughs> reasonable point. Next one. <laughs> we have another plug wire. Let's see what this reads. There's so much dielectric grease down in there. How much dielectric grease can you put in one wire? F 
316 ohms. So that's a lot more consistent there. This is the wire off of that first cylinder. And again, three kilo ohms. That's gotta be bad. Wow. That has to be bad. So I guess uh, we're still putting plugs in it and we're gonna go to NGKs, the uh, G Power Platinums, because I'm a big fan of NGKs. I'm sure the AC Delcos were actually fine. It's a good platinum, but uh, off to the races with new plugs, new wires. We'll just swap all these out and hopefully no more misfire if it didn't kill the coil. And there were no coils in stock at O'Reilly's today. It was gonna take like a few extra hours and I just wanted to get this done. So hopefully this knocks it out. I've got the passenger bank of the Corvette swapped out here. All new plugs, all new wires, and we're gonna start it, and I'm gonna hop in there very quickly and try to feel the cylinders. Uh, first, I think we'll be able to tell if the car's vibrating too much, if the misfire's there, but also I'm gonna try to feel the uh, exhaust manifold real fast to see if there's a cylinder that's not getting uh, warm. So we gotta hurry on this because obviously I have to do the other side and I don't wanna burn my hands over there. Let's uh, see if she's still shaking. Give it like a little rest. Kill it. It's still misfiring. Yeah. So, uh, I guess we keep going. Maybe it's a bad coil, but I think we'll end up doing a compression test real fast just to see what happens. So I loaned my compression tester to Josh because he's working on the Austin Healy. So we got out the leak down tester and we've got this thing rolled up on its compression stroke and valves are closed and everything like that. So. Let's throw some air in here and see what we've got. Here's the air, 125 PSI down there. And over here, we're at, regulate this to, it says 90 is where you want it, you know. And we're at about 88. It looks like 88 to me. Take a look at the chart. At 90, 88 is 2% leakage, which is really good. We are absolutely fine. And uh, there's a train coming. Well, we still have the misfire, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the driver's side bank really quick. Uh, might as well swap it all out with new plugs and new wires, and then we'll move on to troubleshooting this cylinder. And 100% uh, Jake looks hilarious over here. He's using the fire truck headphones to isolate himself from the noise of using a slide hammer on his car. Doesn't fit. Push harder. If you push really hard, quarter inch connectors go right into your phone. Huh. No big deal. But it honestly, like when you walked by earlier, I was like, it looks like Jake's on a race team right now. It looks like he's, <laughs> he's actually gonna do pit stop. So this is one of the first times I've ever had to remove a coil from a car to install the spark plug wire. And when I removed the coil, they point down like this. I looked up inside uh, the, like the housing here and this black clip, the black clip that holds the metal together so it like positively clicks onto the coil was stuck inside here. And of course, as soon as I got it out, and uh, set this up the way it should look. A nice, should be two clicks. <laughs> Where's the two clicks? There, a nice positive two clicks. And now we actually have the spark plug wire on, which makes me think maybe that other spark plug wire that was on here was just never really connecting. So uh, we're gonna put all this together again, just two tens to put the coil back on, plug it in and uh, we'll start it up again, see what happens. Maybe the misfire goes away. Maybe it doesn't, maybe we keep troubleshooting, but 
at least it's interesting. I wondered why I spent 20 plus minutes trying to put a spark plug wire on. So we have this coil unplugged. Give it a little flip. No, that's rough. Kill it. No change. Just as a quick test, we pulled all four bolts out of the fuel rail, lifted it up, and cranked the engine for a second. All eight injectors seem to be firing in the firing order, so we don't think it's like a stuck open injector or anything like that. Well, it seems like it's not like flawless, but then again, this car hasn't been driven in a long time. And yes, there's still that nasty exhaust leak. You can even hear it popping up here, but we're gonna take this thing out and drive it because we're not getting a single misfire cut out of the ECU. So, there we go. The nuts for the wiper blade. Seem okay? Oh yeah. We're getting this thing sorted out, but I think we've got the misfire, which is obviously today's goal. That hinge is messed up. I gotta sort that out. Uh, honestly, like if you push down, it sort of stays, and that's what I've been doing. The best thing about Park Avenue is you can just drive right underneath them. You can park under it too. Oh yeah. Get it? Park at... First drive on my new wheels and tires. All right, here we go. It is saying high oil temperature, which makes me think we have a failed oil temperature sensor. Shocker. Yep. And service vehicle soon and door ajar, even though no door is ajar, which is hilarious. Unless mine is, but... Oh, it was mine. <laughs> <laughs> Trouble codes are not oh, detected. No codes, okay. I thought I thought we were just saying it was broke. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> we have no codes. Sweet. You know your faith in a car is low when you get no codes and think that means the reader is broken. Oh, I have no uh, speedo. And I don't remember if I had a speedo before or not. Huh. I don't think I did. So we need to start troubleshooting that. Uh, what Fuel. about O2 trims? Fuel trim. Yeah, that's exactly what I was just Trims saying. look great. They're all great. I mean, okay, it's in competitive driving mode. Coolant temp looks good. Engine's up to temp. Uh, oil temp just keeps turning on and off and on and off, but yeah, I mean, we're... it'd probably be nice to put a few miles on this, but hey. Wow. Did you feel it scratch second? Yeah. Ah! It went and got it. Yeah, no, uh, no knock no pulling timing or anything. That is awesome. That was a healthy pull. Good. I think what's going on is we still have rub because I haven't installed those spacers or anything. <laughs> oh. Yeah. No. Dude, it smells great. It smells like it fixed itself. It was probably just a... Uh... Does just... this have cats? It does have all, all four cats still. Oh, after all the driving, it only has a secondary air code, which is great because we deleted that. And soon I will go in and tune that out, turn the code off so it never sets that again. So, I mean, it drives and it doesn't smell as rich and it starts amazing, at least all the other times. I, I should start it right now for you guys. So. <laughs> oh, wow. That's way better. Oh, it starts now. Uh, coolant temp started creeping up. Uh, we do need to re-bleed that because we had to pull a bunch of coolant lines off when we were doing the intake. It was up to about 220, which isn't crazy for these cars, but I do think I could probably burp the system and get a little bit of air out of it. Um, and we still have a high oil temp code, and that started really soon after we started it, when the engine was barely up to temp. And if we sit here and watch the oil temp on the screen, it just jumps wildly. So that has to be a bad sensor. I'm gonna go ahead and get that sensor coming and we'll swap it out because it's super easy on the lift. So I'd say that's success. We're getting really close on the drivetrain on the car. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shopwatchjrgo.com where you can find cool shirts just like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you wanna do. And I will talk to you next time. So it seemed like it might've been shifting weird and it had me thinking that there's butt connectors all over the Prindle and stuff like that. But Jake said the ECU is reporting the correct gears and the tablet knows how fast the car is going and the speedometer doesn't. So maybe it's a broken speedometer. I was even switching between, oh, you know what? It sweeps when you turn the car on. It can't be a broken speedometer. It does a self-test. Well, the servo's good. There could still be a wiring there, harness issue. There could be something with- A wiring issue in this car? No way. Unbelievable, right? <laughs> anyway, we're getting close. Getting close. I'm pumped.
I know everybody saw that Fram oil filter and hated it, and believe me, I hate it too. It's the worst filter. Very soon, we'll get a Wix XP on here, change the oil, and that should fix any problems with like leftover fuel that was in the oil, and everything to finish. The wheels is here, lug nuts, spacers. Uh, they're, they're very, very small spacers, so it's not like you have to deal with anything extra for those. It should be just enough to give it a little bit of the poke I'd like. It won't even, it won't even come out of the fender well. Uh, what else? There's more. There's just more. This car is going to be sweet. I'm so excited about the super cheap Corvette and pretty much every part's in here. Uh, maybe we do a top next and uh, clear cut repair.